Let's look at the skeletal system. Now, as you know, the skeletal system is all about bones. But in addition to bones, don't forget cartilage. Also, you'll see ligaments holding bone to bone. We'll look at other structures you see inside this system, too. But with bone being so hard and dense, it's very good for support. The overall shape of our body is due to our bones and where they're at, and all the other softer tissues are attached to them. And you'll see that ligaments are what are binding bones to bones, holding them together in a very strong way. Protection. <clears throat> Since this tissue is so hard and strong, look at how our skull protects our brain. Our ribs and sternum protect our heart and lungs. Third item listed here is movement. Our skeletal muscle pulls on these bones, using them as simple levers. And look at what binds muscle to bone. Tendons. Don't confuse those with the ligaments that hold bone to bone. Storage of material. Calcium and phosphates are just a few of those things stored there. You've probably heard of the calcium before without doubt. And if you look deeper inside the bone at the marrow, you'll also find some adipose tissue stored there, especially as we get older. And then lastly, don't forget blood cell production. That's one a lot of people usually don't think of with bone. But again, inside the bone, where you got the bone marrow. That's where every red blood cell, white blood cell, and platelet is being made. Now again, let's look at the components of the skeletal system. Bone, we're going to look at different types of it a little bit further along. Cartilage. Remember from a previous video, there's three different types. Hyaline, fibro, and elastic. They're often closely associated with bone. And the hyaline cartilage is what most all of our bones were back early in development. And there again are the ligaments, holding bone to bone. So let's look back at that hyaline cartilage. Very strong and very dense tissue. Right after bone, this is the strongest, densest, and toughest tissue inside your body. And like other cells, you can often see with these connective tissue cells, blast and clast in the name. Chondro, which means cartilage in Latin. Chondroblast would be a cartilage building cell. Chondrocytes would be one that still build, but not as much. And they're going to maintain the tissue after the blast have built it up. Notice how you don't see any chondroclast because you don't want to ever be breaking down cartilage. The loss of it is what causes a lot of pain and trouble with our joints as we get older. And these chondrocytes live inside of a hollow space called a lacuna, just like you saw with the osteocytes back in another video. Now, the matrix will always be the material around the living cells in a tissue. If you look at this hyaline cartilage, one of the reasons it's so strong, it has many collagen fibers. Remember, those are like little steel cables giving strength to tissues. The proteoglycans are little proteins like to trap water, so it gives a little bit of a cushion to it. The parachondrum has been mentioned before in other videos. This is an outer layer of connective tissue. It often looks almost like a skin around cartilage, and you see something very similar around bone. It's got a little inner and outer layer. The inner layer is a little bit more delicate, has fewer fibers, and contains chondroblast, where the outer layer has blood vessels in it. Let's also look here at articular cartilage. Now, articular cartilage is not a different type of cartilage. It's just cartilage found in an articulation. An articulation is a joint, a place where bones come together. So wherever bones come together and meet, you don't want to be grinding bone on bone. That would cause a lot of damage very quick. You want to put over its surface hyaline cartilage. Think of hyaline cartilage as being very smooth, hard, and glass-like. It's going to cut down on friction, help those joints to last longer. And when you look at how cartilage grows, there's two different ways, appositional and interstitial. Now, appositional growth is growth at the surface, where interstitial is growth from within the tissue. So cartilage grows in both ways, surface and within. But when you look at bone, only grows at the surface. Bone is too hard and dense to expand, so you won't see any interstitial when it comes to bone. So here's a histology picture right here, some hyaline cartilage. This is a zone of it going left and right across this little picture right here. You can see the little round spaces called the lacuna that the chondrocytes live in. So again, imagine that being very hard and smooth and glass-like, very strong. And again, there's many places you can find this here. If you feel around your trachea, your windpipe, you can feel that very strong hyaline cartilage there, helping to hold those passageways open. In between your ribs and sternum is another good place you'll find them. And as we mentioned before, back when our bones first developed, most of them came from hyaline cartilage. When you look at the structure of a long bone, you'll see near the end of it, there's a zone of hyaline cartilage if that bone is still getting longer. 
So it's still associated with bone growth when we look at those long bones further along. Looking at bone histology, look at the material around all these living bone cells. Again, that's what matrix is, the material around cells in a tissue. And this bone matrix is very, very strong. If you look at what's in it, it's largely two things, collagen and hydroxyapatite. Now, the collagen, also called the organic portion, remember like little steel cables. You won't stretch a steel cable, but it will bend. Collagen gives flexibility to bone. If you don't have enough collagen in your bone, it's going to break and crack and be too brittle. The inorganic part, called the hydroxyapatite, is the very hard mineral stuff. That's the weight-bearing, supporting part of the bone. So again, the collagen gives flexibility. That's about a third of that bone matrix. And the hard mineral hydroxypatite is the very strong weight-bearing material. You look at how this collagen and hydroxypatite work together. Look at when concrete is poured. You'll always see some metal pieces in it, right? Little pieces of metal bars going in all directions. That'll give flexibility to it, where again, the concrete is the hard weight-bearing strength. And look at what's in this hydroxypatite calcium phosphates and hydroxide ion. So you've always heard about how calcium is needed for bone growth. Well, there's where it's at right there. So again, you don't want too little or too much of either one of those materials, or you'd have a problem with the bone lasting the way it should. Looking at the bone cells, there again, you see the osteoblast, clast, and sites. Again, you got the bone builders, those that maintain, and those that break it down. Under that, you see mention of stem cells. There are still a few of these. Stem cells are cells which have not yet developed into one of the adult cell types in the human body. That's what's so special about them. They can develop into other cells. You also see mention here woven bone, which is new or young bone. You see a lot of this when our bones are developing, also after they've been damaged and it needs to regrow. Lamellar bone is the mature bone laid down in very hard, strong sheets. The cancellous is what's also called spongy bone, and not because it's soft like a sponge, but because it looks like it. If you look at a sponge, you see what looks like all these interconnecting pieces going all directions with space in between. That's how cancellous looks. The compact is very dense, compact, and tight. You don't see space in between all the tissue like you do with the cancellous. So looking at the osteoblast, again, here's where most all your bone building comes from, right here. When you talk about ossification or osteogenesis, that means the building of bone. Now, if you look again at what they're building, the collagen is definitely one of those things. It's a protein made at the rough endoplasmic reticulum, and the Golgi body will modify it, package, and distribute it out into the matrix whenever it's needed. That's exocytosis, putting something outside of the cell. You'll see that hydroxypatite being moved, just like the collagen. So again, ossification is the formation of bone. And those osteoblasts can still communicate, just like those osteocytes can. There's lots of little spaces that connect them together, we'll see in a future section. You got lots of gap junctions, which are ion channels that connect them and let them communicate. <clears throat> so after the blast, we have the sites. Now, after an osteoblast has surrounded itself with matrix, it then slows down and doesn't build as much. And that's when it's called an osteocyte. So all these osteocytes used to be osteoblast. Again, they live inside of a hollow space, a lacuna. We've seen that before. There's tiny little cracks and passageways called canaliculi. Think of those as tiny little cracks that connect them. The hard bone matrix is so dense that material won't really diffuse through it. You gotta have a way to pass nutrients to these cells to keep them alive, and that's largely what those tiny canals are for. Then we've got the osteoclast, which break down bone. And you think, why would you ever wanna break down bone? A few different reasons. Number one, maybe you need to release some of that calcium into the blood. If you don't have enough of that calcium in your blood and available to things like neurons and muscle cells that can't work correctly. So this is a good storage site for that calcium. And also if a bone's been damaged, fractured, you're probably gonna to need to tear away some old pieces that you no longer want and rebuild some new ones with the blast. So they use quite a bit with that. So they're found in a ruffled border around the very edges. You may see that in some of the histology pictures. They can secrete hydrogen ion. You talk about acids right here to eat away that bone when it's needed. And these osteoclasts were originally monocytes, which is a type of very large white blood cell. You see more of those in the blood chapter. 
They do have more than one nucleus, which is a little bit rare for most cells. And again, you'll st still see some stem cells, which can develop into chondroblast or osteoblast. Now, looking back at some of our different types of bone, here's the woven, the new bone, young bone. Again, you got lots of it in your body when your bones are first being developed in that fetal period. But again, after a fracture or damage, you got to tear away and remove some old bone. That way you can build it back the way you need. That's what that remodeling is all about. Remodeling is the action of the clasp breaking down and removing bone pieces you no longer need and rebuilding it back up to the way it was before. Again, starting off again as woven, young bone, then ring being remodeled into the lamellar, which is the mature bone. When you look at this mature bone, you'll see these sheets of lamella, and there's a few different types of it. Very hard, strong, dense material. But then again, with the cancellous or spongy bone, Here's where you have these very hard, strong, interconnecting pieces called trabeculae inside of it. There's lots of spaces inside that trabeculae, but those trabeculae themselves are still very hard and strong. And anywhere the bone has got more stress on it, usually around the very outside and different regions, just depends on what the bone is and where the weight is distributed at, you'll see more of the trabeculae. If you start to put more stress on that bone in this region, more of those trabeculae will be made to strengthen that bone up. So here's your hard compact bone. You always see what's very characteristic, what's called these osteons. They look about like tree stumps there. So you can see one of them surrounded by a bracket right here. These tiny little dots are the lacuna of the spaces where those living bone cells, the osteocytes are at. And here's a little central canal where blood vessels were passing. Then again, if you look over here at the spongy bone, there's your hard interconnecting rods, which you can see in purple. And you can see there's lots of space in between them. 